introduction to your HFOI Acutronic Failure Ventilator. Um, today we are going to do a circuit setup so that you understand how your circuit works. Um, in a separate video clip we will show you how to connect your um, non-invasive mask and in a third video clip we will show you the orientation of your machine and how it basically works. So for the purpose um, to set up your equipment uh, we basically only going to show you how the circuit looks, why you use what you use so that you are orientated towards your circuit. First of all this is your dedicated Accutronic Fabian circuit. Um, the circuit comes in a sealed pack like this. On the inside of your pack you will see that there is smaller packages. I have one that's open so I'm just going to show you this. There's a little packet with connections. Please do not throw these connections away. It is separately sealed as well so that you can basically keep it in your drawer at your patient's bed. But all the connections for nitric oxide as well as non-invasive ventilation or nasal CPAP is in this packet. So please keep this packet. Um, it will just save you a lot of time not to go and have to find a lot of connections and pipes. So this already comes sealed inside um, your circuit. If we look at the circuit, and I'm going to use one that's already open. I just want to get it in my hand. If we look at the circuit, um, it's a circuit like everybody knows with a white and a blue tubing. The important thing that we have to know or note about this circuit is that the circuit is heated on the outside of the circuit. You will see little ridges on the outside of the circuit and the inside of the circuit is actually a smooth core circuit. The reason for that is that you cannot oscillate on a corrugated circuit so you need a smooth bore circuit for oscillation and this dedicated circuit for the Accutronic or the proprietary circuit is dedicated that you can move between modalities of ventilation, oscillation and nasal CPAP without having to exchange a circuit. But this is the circuit that you ideally would use for oscillation. If we look at our machine, I am just going to turn the machine around so we can just orientate ourselves to the back of the machine and then we will go to the front. If we look at the back of our machine, you will see that there is a medical air inlet, so the machine needs medical air, an oxygen hose. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm not connected to oxygen, but to a compressor because I'm in an auditorium. You will see that you have a CO2 cable, so there's a CO2 capability. There's a flow sensor cable, which I'm going to talk about just now. There is your computer connectivity, as well as your saturation probe that will slide in there. If we talk about the hot wire flow sensor, and this is something that I really cannot stress enough. Just get my little flow sensor here. The flow sensor looks like this. I just want to get control over it. There we go. The one side of the flow sensor has little holes where the pins can go into. And the other side is a little connection that will go into your hot wire flow sensor. At the back of your machine, you have metal pins and if I talk about metal pins it means if you force something in there it can actually break. Therefore we advocate that you put your flow sensor cable in and this becomes part of your equipment. You do not remove it um, if you discontinue ventilation on a patient. This will actually stay on your machine and it will just pro prolong the life of your cable. So if we look at the bottom of the connector there's a little almost like a little knobby there and on the inside of the flow sensor there is a little dent so you actually have to align these two to go perfectly it slides in and then you can secure it that you do not have any damage to your cable so this is now secure and ready for use and if you use it like this and you don't disconnect it every time you just clean this with your alcohol wipes 
and it is clean for the next years. At the front of my machine, you will see that I have a, I just have a hook right there. You will see that I have an inspiratory limb which is marked blue. I have a proximal pressure line which always needs to be connected. I have an expiratory limb and I have a nasal CPAP um, connection in the front of my machine. Important to note on your expiratory limb, if you twist it and take it out, you will see that there is a little diaphragm on the inside. The cleaning instructions for this is in your operator manual. But please note that the word top is written on the little sensor. And if you put it in, you must be able to read the word top, then you know that it's placed correctly into um, your exhalation valve. You will also see that there's little ridges, so this can only go in in one way, and please do not force it in. It automatically, automatically slides in, and you will see it's very easy to assemble. So if I put it in, I will feel there it goes in, and I will just twist it. Please do not over twist it. Once it's locked in, it's locked in and you will have no leak on your system. Okay, I'm going to go to the setup of my proprietary circuit. Remember it's a non-corrugated circuit and heated on the outside. First of all, I usually call this my little blue. So this is the piece of circuit that brings the fresh oxygen and air from your machine to your humidifier and in new notes we always use active humidification so there's my inspiratory limb it's going to come from my ventilator and it's going to connect onto my humidifier okay there's a reason also why i put it on that side it just makes the connection of my heated wires so much easier i then need to get the gas from my humidifier to my patient and once again blue always delivers to your patient so it's going to slide on my humidifier there and the only thing that I still need to connect so I'm sorry I have a lot of wires here Let me just get this out there's your inspiratory limb it's the white it will bring the gas back to your machine okay we then have a proximal line on the ventilator. The purpose of the proximal line is to measure your pressures for you. So it connects to proximal and it basically only slides over there. Connected to your patient. Okay. You then have your circuit. And last but not least, I will show you how to connect your flow sensors. But first, I just quickly want to talk about the heater wires. Your heater wires on your machine um, comes from your humidifier. Sorry, I just want to grab that. So first of all, you have your two pins with a little triangle that can only go in in one place. And you will see there's a little one with the same little triangle hook. A bit difficult to see on the white, but it can only go in in one way. You then have your long line. And this is your proximal flow sensor or your proximal heater sensor, and this needs to go closest to your patient. So there's your little cap that you just take off, which I can't get off, there we go. So it goes in, that is connected closest to your patient. So now that will measure heat as well as flow, and this will measure the proximal heat that goes into your patient's ET tube. There's a second set of wires that always comes with your humidifier and I usually call them my feedback wires so they all usually deal um, heaters so you will have a little clover connection and a clover so they can only fit in one way there we go and then you have a little two pin one and a little two pin one on your circuit they can only fit in one way so if you can build a puzzle you can set up a circuit. But there we go. Before we go to the flow sensor of this specific machine, it's important to know that you can get the flow sensor, um, or two types of flow sensors rather. The one is a yellowy orange flow sensor, 
and this is a reusable flow sensor that must be cleaned between patients. The cleaning instructions is in your operator's manual. This, however, is a disposable flow sensor, nappy coated so it is chargeable to the patient. This flow sensor is a single use, so you will use it for a patient and once the patient is discharged, you will dispose of the flow sensor and there's no risk of contaminating another patient with a flow sensor that was connected to another patient. So this is the option that we advocate, but at the end of the day, both of them are available. For the sake of the presentation, I'm going to use a disposable one, but please note that there is a reusable one available as well. I'm going to use my little disposable flow sensor. And it's important to note that you have three sides to this flow sensor. The one that connects to your tube, the one that connects to your ED tube, and the part that connects to your proximal um, flow sensor, or this is the proximal flow sensor, to your heater um, cable, the one that we said that we must handle with care and respect. So if we look at the heater cable, we can see that it has a round side and a flat side, and if we look at the flow sensor, it also has a round side and a flat side. So once again, if you can build a puzzle, you can connect this heater wire, and obviously they will connect in flat to flat and round to round, and there's no way that you can be wrong. Okay. You have your um, circuit that we have already set up. It has a little red stopper in the front to keep the circuit clean. You're going to disconnect it. The small part comes to your circuit. And the bigger part is going to come to your patient's ET tube or your patient or your clean test lamp. Okay. It's important what I said just now to your clean test lamp. Please always note that when you set up a circuit for a ventilator, you need to wear gloves, you need to wear a mask, you need to wear an apron. The integrity of your circuit is determined by how you use it and how you set up your ventilator. So please take precautions. Use your gloves, your mask, your apron to keep the circuit clean. If the circuit is contaminated by hands before you use it to your patient, obviously your patient is going to be contaminated as well. So please make sure that you use your PPEs when you connect your circuits and give the patient the benefit of the doubt for having a clean circuit. Okay, we connect it to the machine now. You can see we have a heater wire, flow sensor, patient, and our circuit, we have a proximal pressure line, we have our heater wires that will determine our heat and our flow and our humidification to our patient, we are connected to our machine, inspiratory, expiratory and proximal pressure. Okay, I'm going to switch the machine on just to show you the calibration of the flow sensor. The calibration of the flow sensor is something that literally takes five seconds. If you can blink your eye, it's already done. So there's absolutely no reason why one would not calibrate this flow sensor for the patient. It's important to calibrate the flow sensor because if you calibrate the flow sensor, you know that your circuit doesn't have a leak, the machine is tested, and the values that you are getting back from the flow sensor, the information, is so much more reliable. So I'm going to switch my machine on. Here we go. It's going to boot up. And the awkward silence while we're waiting for it to start. There we go. It's quite quick. So the machine doesn't have to stand on. You will see just on the side of the machine because we're going to use it on a patient. But there's some indication lights. We can see that it is connected to electricity and my battery is currently charging. If you switch this machine on, you cannot go any further if you do not do the one silly test on this machine. And if you look at this, it says system self test, meaning the machine is automatically testing for pressures, is automatically testing for leaks, is automatically testing um, your electronic part of your machine. So there's nothing that you have to do on it. 
It says, please perform the acoustic audio alarm test. Very important. You have to tell the machine that you can hear it. So we're going to say yes, audio test. We can all hear that and you just have to say yes, I can hear it or no, I can't. If I say yes, it will take me automatically to my calibration system and that is your flow sensor calibration there. And we can say that it says, please calibrate the flow sensor. Okay. I just quickly want to go, are we connected there? Just remember I'm working from a compressor, so sometimes we will get a different message there. It's nothing with the machine, it's just I'm working from a compressor which is currently very silent. Yes, but I'll check it out just now. So if you look at this machine, I am just quickly want to tell you, you must tell the machine whether you are busy with a neonate or whether you are busy with a pediatric patient more than 10 kilos. If you are busy with a new night, you will see that the little block is green. If you want to do a pediatric patient, you touch the little block and it will tell you you must have a pediatric flow sensor and pediatric circuit. For the demonstration of this machine, this is a neonatal circuit, but if I say yes, it will then highlight the pediatric one for me, but I'm going to do neonatal, so I'm going to go back to neonates and it once again tell me I need a neonatal circuit and a neonatal flow sensor. I'm going to say yes, and you can see that I am in neonates now. I'm going to put in the body weight of my baby. You see, I'm touching the screen there. It becomes green. I then go to my rotary knob. I'm turning my rotary knob. There we go. And I'm going to confirm. I'm going to use a kilogram baby. Now you can see I'm in neonatal mode for a kilogram baby and the block is blue so this is the correct block you can now calibrate this circuit in two ways first of all if this is connected and you have a test lung the only thing that you need to do is you need to occlude the test lung and you need to press flow calibration if I press, press flow calibration I just press it. there it goes you can see that it's calibrating it's becoming green and my calibration is done and passed. There it tells you last calibration was done 13.05 on the 11th of June. Okay. If your flow sensor was not connected in, in the circuit and on a test lung, you can also use your sterile gloves and just occlude both sides of the flow sensor and you can run your calibration like that. It's going to check. Calibration running There it's done. Okay, but please remember that you must have um, Gloved hands with sterile gloves. Please do not use a proximal flow sensor That's going to go on a new natal baby with bare hands or on sterile gloves. Therefore I use um, The closed circuit approach because my test lungs um, Are properly cleaned and I have a clean circuit. Okay, it just helps with the integrity of your circuit So your machine is now set up your circuit is set up and it is ready for use